Hey guys, Keith here. All right, so I wanted to spend a little bit of time going through uh, this new uh, feature for allowing you to actively assign your models onto your controllers. Um, I've got a fairly basic setup here, a couple of controllers, each one with 10 universes. Uh, both of them are set as E131. The protocol's not that significant. I mean, ZCPP gives you some advantages in terms of obviously configuring the controllers on the fly and not having to remember to upload them, but the features that I'm about to show you will work with either. And I know many of you are still using E131, so we'll demonstrate it with that. The controllers are both set up as Falcon. This first one has a, a single expansion board. Uh, this one here has no expansion boards. Other than that, they're not that interesting. The only other thing is, uh, and this does become important because what I'm going to show you behaves differently. This one here is set as auto layout models. What that means is that models which are placed on this controller, we're going to give up control over which channels they're given versus the second controller, which is not set up as auto layout models. Uh, the concept is that we would generally be assigning uh, those models to universes which are going to go on the controller and we'll still be able to use the, the new visualizer and we'll still be able to assign models to ports, but we'll be more constrained because uh, we can't change the channels around, etc. And, and that's going to cause issues. Now, uh, for... You know, FPP and Falcon and the Hinks picks, which all support virtual strings, you'll still get a lot of flexibility. Uh, but with other controllers which don't have virtual strings, really the controller is the limiting factor here. And you know, X lights can't mask the fact that the controller's got those limitations. So you're still going to have to do a lot of work yourself. But for the more advanced controllers, and I really don't know why anyone would release a controller these days that doesn't support virtual strings, you do get a lot of flexibility. So I've also created a layout here. The layout's extremely simple. There's just a bunch of standard stars, a couple of uh, standard mega trees, and these candy canes down here I've all created as single channels. This one's going to be a bit of an adventure. I haven't done a lot of DMX models yet, so we'll see how that goes. I apologize if that starts to go wrong. So the first thing that you'll notice is that these are all being given their default start channels. So as if I had dropped the, the eight stars down, the two trees and the candy canes, and it's just assigned all of the default start channels. So in the first instance, this is all saved because we're going to go back to this in a minute. Let's... Uh, Let's just set them all up, or as many of them as we can, up on this first controller here. So you notice I haven't done anything. I haven't set any ports or anything. All of these things are there very much their defaults. No port set, no protocol set. Um, same with all of the stars. Uh, same with these candy canes. The only thing I've done on the candy canes is I've obviously set them to single color white, so they're a single channel. But I haven't set any of the ports or anything here at all. Everything's just set up to use the start channel. So the concept is, is you'll come to visualize and visualize looks a little bit different. Now, remember, this is the uh, auto layout uh, controller. And so all of the models are listed over here, even if they are or are not on a universe that is on this controller, they're all available. Uh, if you run your mouse over it, you can see uh, details about the, the thing. It, it actually tells you what controller. So this is controller left. You can tell that up in the top left hand here. Yet these models here, uh, that one is on controller left. Um, but once I come down towards the bottom here, oh, they are. These ones here are on controller right. So they're not all on controller left at the moment in terms of their channels. So let's go and start to put some things on it. So it really is as simple as grabbing a, a model, dragging it over, and deciding what port you want to put it onto. Um, and it will assign it and update it. And you, if you look here now, the start channel is now anchored onto, uh, onto that controller. Uh, it's set to, on port one and it's uh, on the zero one. So it's all good. So we can now go and grab all the other stars and I can do things like I can chain them on the end. Uh, I can come over and put you know, star four here and then suddenly realize, well, I really should have put star three before star four. So if you drag it on the left-hand side, it'll insert it into the chain. 
um, really it's as simple as doing that. You can also change your mind and decide uh, I'm going to drag them around, all of that's possible as well. Uh, if you drag a uh, tree here, so you'll notice this tree here has 16 strings. So when I drag it over to here and drop it onto port 5, it will consume the 16 strings that it needs to consume. Uh, even more importantly, if I come down here and drag the other tree on and I drag it onto 27, you'll see it creates additional ports here but shows them all in red because those ports don't actually exist on a controller that only has the two expansion ports. So I know at this point in time here that I've got a problem and this is not going to upload correctly. Um, so you can move it back up. Uh, if you want to put a star on the end of the last string of the first tree, you can do that there and it will show where the star will appear. It will appear at the end of the last string. Uh, if you want to take this tree off, you can just drag it back over here and drop it over here and it will unassign it. You'll see um, it's been unassigned from that controller. Well, actually, has it? Maybe it didn't unassign it. Probably should have done. All right. So everything here is looking pretty good. Um, very simple to configure. When you come down to the serial ports, you can do a similar thing. You can drag and drop across the candy canes and just drag them all down here and chain them all together. Um, I don't necessarily have a way yet for you to leave gaps in the channels. That may be something that I consider in the future. And you can see here that it's showing you the number of channels used rather than the number of pixels used because it knows that uh, AC props, you're typically much more worried about the channel count than you are about uh, anything else. Um, that's all good. So yeah, it really is as simple as that, configuring a controller when you've got auto start channels. Everything you've left over here is not on the controller. Everything over here is on the controller. And you're done. Simple as that. Uh, you, now, this is active. So this is actually showing you what is in force. There's no OK cancel, so you can't now cancel out of this and undo everything automatically. Uh, if you want to undo everything at this point, you'll have to close the dialog and actually shut X lights down and not save it because uh, both the setup tab and the layout tab have potentially changed as a result of you dragging and dropping all these models around and putting them onto the controller. So. That's all good, we'll close that. And if we quickly go back to the layout and resort it by the start channel, you can see that all the start channels have changed. Uh, now there's some things here that are now overlapping as a result of that, but that's because I haven't assigned all of the props to models. So that's not surprising. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is uh, I wanna reset this. So, so I'm gonna shut X lights down and restart it and bring it all back with everything in its original configuration. So up comes X lights. Uh, now what I wanna do is I wanna put things onto the right controller, which is universes 11 to 20. Now, because this controller is not auto layout, if I go in and click on right and to visualize, you'll notice that only a handful of models appear here. And that's because these models happen to be on that right hand controller. And they really only happen to be there because I obviously ran out of my 5100 uh, channels somewhere up here. And then this tree and these candy canes all turned out on the other controller. So if you want to uh, start putting these things onto your second controller, of course, you're going to have to set some universes. So let's let's do that. Let's set this on universe 11, universe 12, universe 13. This is very wasteful of universes, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, hash 14. Uh, let's get rid of this one uh, off the second controller, so we'll put it back on universe one. And uh, for this one here, I'm just gonna set the first one. Uh, what were we up to? We're up to 14, so let's put this on universe 15. Hash universe 15. And I think I'll have to put that on hash one as well. Get that out of the way. Okay, so now these four stars on the end and these candy canes should be on our second controller on universes 
uh, 1 to 11 and we can see that up here uh, if we click on sort on start channel uh, we can see uh, that yeah so universe 11 starts here and so it's going to be stars five six seven eight and the candy canes are the only things that are going to be on controller two so when we come over to controller two and we click visualize that's what you get five six seven uh, in the candy canes sorry in the stars and the candy canes are all here and now we can go and assign these now the difference with assignment here you notice how it dropped down and created another line and the reason it did that is because uh, it's triggered the creation of a virtual string uh, for whatever reason I'm, I'm not entirely sure without going in and looking at it but a sec effectively uh, it's it's decided that it needs uh, virtual strings for each one of these and so it's gone and created virtual strings for each one of these uh, the other thing is it will have only updated the port and the protocol it will not update the controller name or anything else that controller name there is just a side effect of uh, which controller we happen to put it onto. Uh, so yeah and there's, there's still a few bugs in there that I need to work through because those controller names should all be actual controller names and, and they don't seem to be uh, and of course the same is true of the candy canes uh, I can come down to uh, the serial ports down here and I can drop my candy canes onto the ports as I need to and it's all good uh, so you don't have as much flexibility once you're not using the auto layout because X lights can't go and shuffle all the channels around to make it easier so you're going to be much more likely to get virtual strings unless you happen to have gotten all your models into order when you set your start channels and this is why you know as you move forward I, I'd ask you to think carefully about well maybe I should give over to X lights and let X lights manage my start channels on my props uh, maybe that will make things a, a lot easier um, maybe it will maybe it won't uh, definitely something to consider so that's it, it it's a it's a fairly um, simple change but I, I think it, it, it really starts to make configuring your models onto your controllers dramatically easier than the old way which required you to really change three or four different fields on here to try and get them all exactly right and and you would often get them wrong and you'd end up with overlapping models and everything else uh, here on the visualizer you you just can't you can't get overlapping channels because uh, in order to have overlapping channels these things wouldn't be able to appear here on the left hand side so you're guaranteed that your models are all going to turn out correct and here it's even going to shuffle them all around so you don't have to have virtual strings as well so I hope that uh, is interesting guys uh, this will be in dot eight um, which I don't know there seems to be a couple of bugs with dot seven so dot eight may may follow fairly quickly if this has bugs I guess it's not such a big deal because this is not an actual core part of uh, uh, using X lights in in your normal way so I may well push dot eight out a little bit earlier and and give you access to uh, to play with this if it stuffs everything up if it starts to lose control you can always just shut X lights down and don't save it and obviously that doesn't save anything to disk and when you restart X lights everything will be back the way it was so thanks guys <laughs>